also meaning that um, the, S the test items themselves should be based off of what you've taught. And so if you have good teaching practices, oftentimes you're going to have good testing practices as well because you are catering to multiple intelligences. You're including many different types of strategies in not only the language itself. You know, and so those would be good teaching, um, good teaching practices, and so the test items would be able to showcase that. Does that make sense? May I ask a question? Yeah. Yeah. What to who? The teacher or the student? Hmm? I think in this context we want to look at the word I reward, um, maybe not necessarily as to whom. Yeah, that one's one. ours, right? But as... Um, Maybe to both. <laughs> Why not? No comments. Okay. <laughs> um, we say teaching. A teaching, it's like derivative of teachers and mm -hmm. so not students. Mm -hmm. Not learning, but teaching. So it's for teachers. Mm -hmm. It's for, I, I think, like, yes, it should reward good teaching in that it is for teachers, but it's also, I mean, it's, that would be the direct understanding, but I think indirectly, good teaching also is for the students. And so the students are impacted by the good teaching practice. Do you see what I mean? So they're indirectly rewarded as well. Good knowledge of the student is the result of good teaching. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's why. Exactly. Okay, next one. Consideration should be given to the elimination of exams as sole assessment to determine an outcome. Yeah. Yeah. So what are other what are other forms of assessment we can use? Everyday work. Yeah, everyday work. Do they do their homework? How do they do on their homework? What else? Mm -hmm. Project. Can you say for example, uh, Einstein, who, he did not show very high results of exams, yeah. comparatively with his wife. His wife was smart according to grades, uh -huh. but Einstein published uh, some scientific papers one after another, and even many scholars and scientists couldn't understand them. And his wife, nevertheless, she was an A student, couldn't publish a single paper or a sheet. Of the, you know. Yeah, I think so, that's a I mean, great example. It's all like uh, testing your right. out, uh, outcome. Yeah, what well, I mean. and I think that's why we have to look for, um, like you said, other forms of assessment. If he was being assessed via those papers, he probably would have been the A student, <laughs> right? Because the professor had been like, this looks great, A+, plus. I have no idea what it says, <laughs> but it seems to be very important. <laughs> Let me send it to someone at Cambridge or Oxford or Harvard and see if they can figure it out. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a, good, that's a good example. Do you, sh do you share that with your students? <laughs> After the test. After the test, yeah. But I think it's something to um, think about as teachers as well, because I had a friend and I've told this story before. Um, I am for some standardized testing, but I'm also against some standardized testing because I had a friend who took the equivalent of like the SAT or the, the TOEFL or something like that in like Finnish. He doesn't speak Finnish. He has no idea anything in Finnish. But he was still able to get a good enough grade that shows that he could get a job in Finnish. <laughs> and it was like he only learned strategies for test taking. He didn't actually have to learn the language mm -hmm. in order to pass the test. So I think that's why this particular point is on here because test taking itself is a skill that students can develop, but it's not the only skill. When they're out on the street, they're not taking a test. They're not having an assessment. So what are the other ways we can assess them that encourages them to be out on the street and to try to take risks and talk to people in the other language 
and maybe even fail occasionally <laughs> in the interaction, but not taking it personally, right? Mm -hmm. just didn't work out. <laughs> if, if we're given a certificate, and sometimes it is written, that student attended that course, mm -hmm. and sometimes you write like performed or but not attended. It's mm -hmm. also kind of assessment. What your role was in that course, you were only a listener or you did something <coughs> with excellent results. Yeah. Um, I mean, that would be a sort of assessment. But I think what this is talking, I, what this I think is really, really getting to is this next line, which, did that do it? is here, the focus on assessment, not tests. And so even a certificate itself is in some way, um, is still defining them in a role sort of position. But what we are looking for is what language do they actually know, not what role they had in a workshop, for example. So if you are all coming to this workshop and you're getting your assessment, your assessment, your um, certificate at the end, it doesn't actually assess whether or not you learned anything. It just said you showed up. <laughs> maybe you were awake, maybe you weren't, but you showed up, right? And so I think what, what we're focusing on here is even small things in class, like giving directions, having them do something, and were they able to complete the task? That's assessment. You know, walking around, writing in your notebook as they're going through some of the errors and then teaching based on those errors and then giving them another practice and seeing could they incorporate any of the new knowledge. That's also assessment. <laughs> so I think that's um, the fundamental principle that uh, Jerry wanted to communicate with you all <laughs> in his presentation. <laughs> um, okay, specify intended test use. So I think this is really important, especially to decrease learner anxiety, right? So if this is a diagnostic test, there's no reason for them to be anxious to the point of them not being able to stay still or like having heart palpitations or something, right? Because it's just a diagnostic test. It's like kind of, it's meaningless until the end of the term. <laughs> um, so making sure that they know what's going on, how you're assessing them, why you're assessing them, et cetera, et cetera. The next one, um, who are the test users? Or I would say test takers. That would be another way to say user. So um, are they your, your students in grade four? And are they in an advanced level, an intermediate level, a beginner le level? Like where, where do they fall? Who are they as, and what have they studied? Does that make sense? Some people are looking perplexed. And what about the psychological tests? Okay, tell me more about the transition into psychological testing. We are tested when we are apply for, when we apply for work. Okay. Which, which needs some psychological aspects. We are tested by test. Mm -hmm. And they are very critical. And they demand one answer on the right. But usually skills are tested. Not skills, but your... Your ability to cope. Yes. Your communication skill, your <laughs> stress resistance, and so on. Um, they are users. Yes, but generally speaking, they're not necessarily used in the classroom. They're generally used for, like, outside of the classroom. And... I think in that context, your the people who are employing you are looking for a certain type of person. And so they are, they know who the test users are, right? They're, they're looking for um, future employees. The future employees are going to be, they're the ones taking the test. They're using the test, right? Mm -hmm. And so they have a very... Um, they, they know what person or what group of people, specific audience, yeah, look they have a very specific, specific. yeah, so in the same way that we should also think about our students and their needs and their level and all of the things that we normally really 
normally most of us think about these as teachers, but um, being very aware of the audience. So it wouldn't be appropriate for me, for example, what level are your students? Intermediate. <laughs> and what grade? Like, are they, are they, they're adults, okay, and they're intermediate. It would not be appropriate for me to give her students the GRE, right, because that is totally <laughs> above their level, and why would I do that? You know, that would not be looking at the users, which are pre-intermediate, and taking consideration into um, what their needs are and what I'm trying to do with this test. I think that's the most important thing to think about. What am I trying to accomplish with this test? Um, also, what is being tested is the next question. So oftentimes, a big problem that all of us fall into at some point or another is we say we're going to test grammar, and then we end up accidentally testing vocabulary, mm. or vice versa. You know, so making sure that whenever we go and create a test, we have someone look at it ahead of time to ensure that we're actually testing what we said we were going to test. When, I, when we used to do that committee, like I told you about earlier, where there were um, two of us creating tests every, uh, for the three tests that we had throughout the semester, we always had to give each other the tests just to make sure. And that was consistently the problem that we had in the test is that there would be, we'd say we were testing one thing, but we ended up testing another thing, and so we'd have to rewrite the test and stuff. Um, it's just something to be aware of. Um, what is the purpose of the test? So why are you doing it? Is it a diagnostic? Is it a midterm? Is it a final? Is it just for fun to see <laughs> where they are? <laughs> You were bad yesterday, have a test. <laughs> to waste time. <laughs> to waste, exactly. Um, what will the impact of the test have on the class? Mm -hmm. So what are your expected, your intended outcomes of the test? Um, and then evaluate the outcomes of the assessment. So making sure that we sit down and we really think about um, this is what the test shows me. This is where the learners are. So how can I incorporate that understanding of where they are and where they need to be or where they could be into my teaching and their learning? And incorporate and lobby for multiple forms of assessment. So whenever you're in a situation where there's only one form of assessment being given, trying to change that um, through a long period of time, probably, <laughs> uh, at my old school, we had, I was, luckily I was on the curriculum committee, so we could move the changes along quickly, but they were always giving the same form of test, and it was like, that's not really good enough, because our students had to be at a level where they could learn in English, and so we had a very high level we had to get them through to, at the end of the semester or at the end of the year. And so you have to have different kinds of assessment, not just testing. And so we were able to incorporate that. But thinking about how can I add, um, how can I add, we're talking about paragraph writing. How can I add that as a form of assessment? And I mean, that will help develop so many other skills as well. Grammar, vocabulary, you know, to name two. Just in working on writing. Yes, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so um, I think that's it. Yes, thank you for thank you. and participating. It was a pleasure to work with you all. Um, I just wanted to remind